Are you just getting into web app pen testing or bug bounty and seeing those EYJ looking session tokens? Well, there's a good chance those might be JWTs or JSON web tokens. And in today's video, we're going to talk about what they are, why you'd even use them in the first place, and using Web Security Academy's first lab, some reasons and ways to hack them. Now, if you already are familiar with what JWTs are, you can go ahead and click the timestamp below. It'll skip right to the lab, so you won't have to worry about going through the explanation of the breakdown. But without further ado, let's get started. So what is a JSON Web Token? Well, a JSON Web Token, or a JWT, is a token that contains JSON data that's encoded and then cryptographically signed. And that JSON data is usually data that the application uses. It could be things as simple as tracking identifiers, but most commonly you see that this JWT takes place of a session token. So let's go ahead and take a look at what a JWT looks like. JWT syntax is very specific, and it's three different JSON objects that are what's called Base64 URL encoded. And what Base64 URL encoded means is it's first Base64 encoded, and then any padding characters, those equal sign characters at the end of the encoded object are pretty much stripped. So it'll look something like this. So a JWT always has three different parts. And these three different parts are, again, Base64 URL encoded JSON objects. And they're all separated or delineated by a period. The first part's going to be the header of the JWT. The second part is going to be the payload or the body of the JWT. And the third part is going to be the signature. Now let's go ahead and break down each individual part. So what we can do is we can grab this token and we can either Base64 decode it and ensure each section has enough padding or we could take this to a website like jwt.io and that'll automatically decode it for us and kind of show it to us in this decoded format. So if we grab this token and go to jwt.io and paste it here, we could see one, it already highlights the syntax for each one, separates the header, the payload, and the signature. And secondly, we can actually see on the right side the decoded format, which is really useful. So the data within the header generally lets the application know some details about this JSON web token. It'll let it know, for example, which type of algorithm is used to generate the signature. Now, the payload is going to be the most important part. This payload or body is going to contain the data that the application uses. So in this case, we could see that this payload contains an ISS. That's who issued this token in a specific case. EXP, which is the expiration time or when this expires, the name and the subject, the role, email, IAT, which is issued at. Now, these JWTs could be as verbose or as succinct as the developer wants it to. A lot of times you'll see these JWTs have pretty much nothing in the payload except maybe a user ID or a username, or it could have something verbose or maybe even overly verbose, like the role of the user or the user's email, or maybe even something as sensitive as a password, which it definitely shouldn't have. But it's our job to go ahead and break these down and take a look at it. The third part is going to be the signature. Now, the signature isn't going to be decoded, obviously, because the signature is essentially validated by the application to ensure that this JWT hasn't been tampered with. Now, it's important to note that the signature in this JWT was generated by the algorithm specified in the header of the JWT. So for this one, we see algorithm or ALG equals RS256 or RSA SHA256. And so when the application sees this JWT, it's going to assume that the signature was generated based off of or using the algorithm specified in the JWT's header. That's really important to note and we'll dive into that when it comes to the vulnerabilities and attack section, but just put a pin in that and keep that in mind for now. So one question you might ask yourself is why would you use JWTs over a traditional session handling mechanism like cookies? Well, JWTs take the burden of session management off of the server and pushes it to the client. Essentially, the application server checks the signature or validates that the token is legitimate. And then once it verifies it's legitimate, it takes the session identifier or the data in the payload and says, hey, it's you, the user. Now, this could be beneficial in instances where you have like an application that has a very JavaScript heavy front end and then multiple back end APIs it has to call out to. Instead of having traditional session handling mechanisms for each individual API that have different fully qualified domain names, you can have a singular JWT and then ideally using asymmetric cryptography and in some cases not recommended symmetric cryptography. Oh no. You can validate that the signature is legitimate and then verify it's the user based off of that JWT. And you might be asking yourself, which by the way, great questions today. Why would we implement JWTs if there's a possibility that we could trick the application into trusting our signature or trusting a malicious JWT that we create? And the reason is because the JWT spec is really flexible by design. And really the vulnerabilities that arise with mishandling JWTs is usually due to an implementation issue or some type of misconfiguration. And based off of how their JWTs look, 
we might be able to take advantage of this misconfiguration and craft our own malicious JWTs. Now, JWT attack methodology, as far as my perspective goes, the first step is going to be identifying that the application uses a JWT. And then from there, our methodology is going to differ based off of what we're seeing within that JWT's format or syntax, more specifically within the JWT header. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's just dive right into this first application and look at the first vulnerability. Now, first thing we can see, it looks like a basic blog application. There's search functionality, my account, so authentication workflows, and it looks like we can view different posts. If we click on view posts, it looks like it just shows us a post with a post ID and the URL, and there's comment functionality. Let's go ahead and see if we can log in. And it looks like we can log in. We'll go ahead and use the credentials provided, Wiener and Peter. And then post authentication takes us to the My Account page. Now we need to see if we can find a JWT. Now, if you use the extension JWT Editor, this is going to automatically highlight the JWT or any requests or responses that contain JSON web tokens. So it's super useful to have. In this case, it looks like it identified a JWT passed as soon as we logged in. So if we go ahead and look at that request, we can see the response actually sets the JWT via a session cookie. So let's go ahead and take a look here at this JWT. We'll throw this to repeater with control R, send the request, and it looks like this request does match or does contain details related to our session because if we go ahead and send the request, it shows that our account ID is Wiener. And if we delete this JWT, it should, as expected, redirect us to the login page. But we'll go ahead and take it to JWT.io so we can see it broken down uh, in this color-coded format. So we look at the header and we can see it has a KID and an algorithm. And the algorithm is RS-256 or RSA-256. The issuer is Port Swigger, the subject is Wiener, and the expiration date is this expiration date here. And it actually breaks it down for us, which is really useful. Now looking at this token, whenever it comes to attacking JSON web tokens, I like to first identify that there is a JWT being passed or handled somewhere. And I want to ensure that that JWT is actually being used for something. And in this case, it's used for session handling. Perfect. So the first thing I want to look at is at the actual header and to look at what algorithm they're using to generate that signature. Then from there, once I know what algorithm they're using, I want to see if I could just modify the payload. If I could just modify the payload, maybe the application isn't even validating that signature. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So it looks like the most important thing we could change here or we would want to change here is the subject because the subject looks like it is the user or the username that we're logged in as. So what happens if we just go ahead and try to change that? So instead of it being Wiener, it, we just change it to Administrator. Let's go ahead and do that via the actual request itself. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and look at the JWT and we can use the extension JWT Editor. So we click on JSON Web Token under the extensions. You can see it actually breaks it down for us here visually. We have the header and we have the payload. What we can do is we can actually change that subject here to Administrator. And you can see up top, it actually modified or changed that JWT for us. Now, if we copy this and we paste it here, we can see it changed the subject, but the signature is still the same. It still ends in XDVW, just like the other one did. But what happens if we send this request? Does the application accept it? We can see we're no longer Wiener, but we're not being redirected to login. If we scroll down, you can see we're actually logged in as the user administrator. So what's going on here? If we go ahead and right click this, show response in browser, and paste that into the browser, we can confirm that we are logged in as admin. So what we can do is we can go ahead and change that session cookie. If we go here, inspect element, go to our storage, and then change that session token value here. Now we can go ahead and always have that token or that token in our cookie jar here, and we're always admin. So each request will contain this updated JWT that we signed. We can click on admin panel, and we actually successfully escalated our privileges. If we delete Carlos, we can go ahead and complete the lab. So what happened here? We just changed the payload of the actual JWT, but we didn't modify the signature. So in theory, the signature was invalid. So in this case, the application isn't even validating that the JWT contains a valid signature. There's no signature verification whatsoever. So we can just modify this JWT payload as is without modifying anything else. So whenever it comes to seeing a JWT, or whenever we see a JWT, the first thing I wanna see is I wanna look at the header and I want to see what type of algorithm the application is using to generate that signature. And then if I modify the payload, does the application accept the JWT as is? And if it does, that means the signature isn't even verified. Now, if it doesn't accept that, then from there, we're going to have to see what else we can do to try, try to either generate a signature or trick the application into accepting the modified JWT as is. And we'll dive more into that in a later lab. Okay, well, let's quickly recap. JSON Web Tokens, 
are essentially tokens that contain JSON data that's used by the application. And that JSON, to that JSON data is encoded and cryptographically signed to ensure that it hasn't been tampered with. Now remember, JSON web tokens commonly are used for authentication or session handling nowadays. And whenever we're attacking JSON web tokens, we want to first make sure that we're dealing with a JWT. You can use an extension like JWT editor to kind of point out when or where a JWT is being passed. But over time, you'll get used to the syntax. A lot of times you'll see EYJ and you'll think it's either a JWT or a PHP object that's being base64 encoded, because usually that just means open curly bracket. But anyway, from there, once you identify you have a JWT, you want to break it down, see if you can decode each section, the header, the payload, not the signature, but the header and the payload. And then you want to look at what type of encry encryption algorithm is being used to generate that signature. Step one, the first thing I always like to try is just to modify the payload or the data within that payload or body of the JWT. If the application still responds the same and lets you modify that data, it's not validating the signature and you can go ahead and put whatever you want in there. Well, that's all I got for this video on JSON Web Tokens. Really appreciate your time. If you have any feedback, please feel free to leave it in the comments below or reach out to me on Twitter or Discord if you have any questions at all. It's been really great connecting with you who've reached out, so thank you so much for that. If you want more from me, I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash gar underscore seven. Hopefully I'll check you out there. Big shout out to my editor, Shakairi. She's been helping me out with these videos, so big props to her. I'll go ahead and leave her details down below. If you have any questions or anything else, feel free to reach out. But until next time, thanks so much. I'll see you around.